Okay, year 12. Um, this is a video um, all about um, refraction. Uh, well, like a part three of this. Uh, last week we went through basic refraction and are now on 13.2, which is on page 190 in your book. Um, and I'm going to go through how the refractive index is linked to ratio of speeds and wavelength. Um, we're going to start looking at the equation for refraction, bend, uh, uh, refraction at a boundary of n1 sine i is n2 sine r. I explain why a prism disperses white light. I probably have to make this video in two halves. So last lesson, lesson or last week, we were looking at light waves coming along like this. And we saw how they bend towards normal. And I showed you, showed you a simulation how you can see wave fronts going through like this and can then change direction. Uh, here was the angle of instance, angle of refraction. And remember, the waves were slowed down here first which made them change direction. So it doesn't make sense, and I didn't mention this before, that the refraction is going to be linked to the ratio of the speeds because it slows down. So there is a diagram on page 190 in your book. Now this diagram is related um, to, I'm going to move that a little bit there, um, it's re related to this picture just here. Here you can see the wavefronts. And I'm very keen looking at the wave front here and going to here as it goes into the substance. So here you've got, gone the wrong way, is going to have your air and there's going to be your glass. So the wave front is here and it's changing direction. So first of all, this is going to be your normal line. And therefore, this is going to be your ray of instant coming in. And here's going to be your angle of instance. Now, if you look at that, does not make sense then that in fact if you take the wave front which is perpendicular to this line going in here is going to be your angle of instance as well as the light goes in the wave front changes direction therefore now this bit here is going to be your angle of refraction because the light ray comes in here and then therefore you have your angle of refraction just there that's where this angle I and angle R comes from. And I remove this now to create a bit more space for me. Therefore, what they've got through is got wave front X and Y. And when it goes into the glass block, it's going to be X dash Y dash. Now, the equation you've done ages ago, you know speed equals distance, which is S divided by time. Therefore, S, get my little pad to work. S is then going to equal to VT. Ooh, vanished again. Okay, now this distance I'm looking at, I was looking at this distance here from Y to Y dash. Therefore, you then know your distance. It's not playing up. The distance going through here. This is going to be your Y, your Y dash. Then it will equal CT because C is going to be the speed of the wave, in this case, air which will be more or less the same speed as a through a vacuum. And that's why we're using the symbol C. Conversely, when it goes into the glass block, you now got X, Y dash, sorry, X, X dash, which is over here. And what they've done in your book then is they've called that C, S, T, which then going to be the speed multiplied by your distance. It's C, S, because that's the speed of light in that substance. So what they got, there's two equations then, that distance there is going to be CT and that distance there is going to be CST. That's going to be smaller because the light has slowed down or the waves have slowed down. Now what you got then is a right angle triangle here. And we all know from trigonometry that sine I equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. So there's going to be an opposite over here, which is going to be CT. Your hypotenuse is going to be this point here to that point there, which is then going to be your X y oh dear didn't do it very well it's going to be your x y dash that means then by rearranging this equation here is the ct is then equal to sine i x y dash oh can't fit my dash in just there which means here taking this equation now is i can then write down on this one is on here and i'll probably go down here is now your sine r, which is this going to be your angle of refraction here, is going to be the opposite, which is CST divided by the hypotenuse, and it's going to be a common hypotenuse, which is going to be x, y, dash. So 
Taking these two equations, you can probably see where it's going now. What I want to do is I want to take this one. Also, I've got to rearrange that one yet. CS now, T is equal to sine R X Y dash. Is I'm now going to take my CT and I'm going to divide it by CST. Well, why am I doing that? Well, I'm doing that because now look at the ratio of the speeds. I've already got the CT here is then equal to sine I and that's sine I X Y dash. And then underneath my CST is going to be my sine R and that's going to be X Y dash. Now we're all getting very excited and we can see what's happening, can't we? The T's are going to cancel. Well, the XY's cancel and suddenly C over CS is now equal to sine I over your sine R. And I know sine I divided by sine R is going to be a refractive index, hence C equals C over CS. That is where that equation comes from. N equals C over CS. And that means the refractive index is to the ratio of the speed of the light in the air compared to ratio of the speed of the light in that substance. Therefore, what they got in your book, here's got your C sine I over sine R equals C over CS, and then you've got your NS equals C over CS. Um, and that's going to be a refractive index for that substance, glass, whatever you've got. Now, then... And this sort of things I can ask in multiple choice. State what happens to the frequency of light as it refracts. Well, you know the equation, the wave equation C equals F lambda. Now, as the light goes through from air to glass, what's going to happen is it's going to slow down. Therefore, the frequency, well, say the speed, can go up or can go down. Well, it's got to keep the frequency the same. And the reason why is with light, we did this in earlier in the year, E equals HF, where E is going to be the energy of your photon. H, remember, is your Planck's constant. This remains constant because the energy of the photon must remain constant. It can't change. Therefore, if that goes down, the wavelength goes down. And what it does, it keeps the frequency the same. If the speed goes up, the wavelength goes up. So the frequency doesn't change at all. And what they start to do then is actually actually work, ask you to work out the speed of light in different substance. Well, it's dead easy. All you use is your N equals your C over CS. So a case in terms here, when you've got glass, I know N equals 1.5. And we all know the speed of light in a vacuum or in air is going to be 3 times 10 to the power 8. And there's going to be the speed of light in that substance. CS equals 3 times 10 to the power 8 divided by 1.5, which then equals 2 times 10 to the power 8, not forgetting our units, meters per second. Okay, I'm probably going to stop it there, because the next part of the video is going to all be bringing about this equation here. I know you're all excited, looking forward to part two.